Hey everyone, Benji and Igor here at the Contractor Evolution Studio. Okay, so if you've ever wasted money on marketing, this episode is for you. The fact of the matter is that there are a ton of marketing agencies out there that are more than happy to take your money but don't actually have a proven track record of getting results in your specific industry. More often than not, Marketers for Hire will use terminology or big fancy words that they know you don't understand in order to sound like they know what they're talking about. And then as soon as they've got your money, they're outsourcing most of what you paid them to do to junior employees or even worse, some subcontractor overseas. Sure. They might send you some report that shows impressions or clicks um, or a beautiful graph pointing up and to the right. But at the end of the day, you're left wondering where the quality leads are. So uh, there's no transparency. There's subpar results, little predictability. This is not good. Now, all that said, marketing and lead generation is an essential part of any business. And it's one of these core areas that you as an entrepreneur need to be literate in. So how do you sort out all that BS from what's truly worth focusing on? This is the reason why we've brought Mark Levesque from WebRunner Media in today. Mark brings a uniquely refreshing and down-to-earth approach to the marketing conversation and shares with us how to spot a marketing firm that's good at, you know, just painting a bright picture of the future versus one that's truly capable of delivering consistent results. Now, Mark's been in the marketing world for 15 years. Him and his 25-person team at WebRunner have successfully managed north of $60 million in ad spend. And most importantly, they work exclusively with seven and eight figure contracting businesses. Now, in our experience, the only marketing experts that you should be listening to are specialized and they've got a proven track record of success. And these guys absolutely do. Couldn't agree more. And uh, in this episode, we cover some awesome stuff. So uh, he talks a lot about the way a proven marketer will communicate with you versus one that's just trying to pull the fleece over your eyes. Um, We get into what stage you as a contractor need to be at to get ROI from a good marketing firm. Um, And then we'll also break down a super effective digital marketing strategy that is currently driving predictable lead flow to his contractor clients. So let's talk Talk digital marketing with Mark Levesque. You're watching Contractor Evolution, where we unpack the systems, tactics, and skills you need to take your fast-growing contracting business to the next level. You're here to learn what it takes to scale up, work less, and increase profitability. You've come to the right place. Stay tuned to learn what separates the new breed of contractor from the old school, and welcome to your ultimate guide on the business of contracting. Mark, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Good to be here, guys. Mark has flown thousands of kilometers, thousands of miles to be here with us. We love that he's here in person. So, um, hi, Mark. Thanks for doing this. Um, I have got a situation that I I really want your take on. So I'm going to just like uh, explain this to you and then then I want your thoughts on it. There's a very common occurrence, I think, among our listeners, which is this. Um, They have engaged a marketing firm of some sort They've gone through, you know, the initial meetings. They've made the decision to work with them. They've gone through an onboarding. They've spent, a, a, you know, a few months. I don't know how long, but they've certainly spent a lot of money. And they're sitting there deeply frustrated by what's happened. Either there's like no reporting back to them on what's going on. They're not really even sure that what they've paid to have done is happening. Um, they're not getting in. Maybe some stuff is being done, but they're not getting any results or, or even worse. Like maybe they've taken the money and ran off and never heard from this marketing agency again. Um, so there's some deep seated trauma, I think with contractors having worked with other marketing firms. And I just like very open-ended question. Why do you think that's so common? Well, I think you're absolutely right, Benji. Hopefully it's not the latter. Hopefully you haven't given money to an agency who's run <laughs> off with it and plan themselves a nice <laughs> two week vacation. Um, I, I, all the points that you brought up, I mean, they're, they're all things that we hear on the regular, unfortunately. Um, and I think some can be attributed to what's happening in the world of contracting. We can, you know, pin it on the contractor. And a lot of the times it's the people they're working with. Yeah. The the unscrupulous, uh, you know, marketing vendors, practitioners, whatever you want to call them, self-proclaimed gurus. But after, uh, from doing this for so many years, working with a lot of contractors, we've been able to really identify trends. They just keep 
you know, coming up over and over and over. And a few that come to mind, well, one, the first one, a lot of companies, uh, I would say who are newer into the world of contracting, they'll have tendency to want to go wide as opposed to narrow, uh. right? It's, I need money. I need money fast. I've just, you know, gone out on my own. Let me offer, you know, all the services that I can, right? Maybe I'm, I'm a roofer, but I'm not going to say no to windows and siding and doors and gutters and cash is king, right? And I want to so, advertise for all of it. And I want to advertise for all of it. And logically, if you think about it, I mean, more services, you need more marketing budget, right? You've got all these different platforms that you can advertise on. It can cost you a lot of money to be on them. So it's, they're at opposite, opposite ends of the spectrum, mm -hmm. right? So the more narrow you can be, the better. That's one very, very common mistake and reason why people are literally lighting money on fire. Mm -hmm. You'll have marketing companies who'll just take the money and they'll nod their head and say, sure, you want us to advertise for all these services with this little budget? Absolutely, let's go. So it's-, it's They uh, just want clients. They're, they're a business too. Yeah. They're, they're a business too. And yeah, um, so that's, that's a recipe for disaster. Uh, the next thing is that oftentimes the marketing efforts don't match the the buyer journey, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't understand what your ideal customer and buyer journey looks like, how can you possibly understand how to market to these individuals, right? So for example, let me kind of break that down. If you take a business that does any type of emergency repair work, right? right? Well, somebody who has a need for your services they've got a problem. Let's say a fire, water damage, restoration, maybe it's emergency repair, roofing. Mm -hmm. If somebody has a need for one of these services, uh, they're conducting a search online. They're finding a contractor or they could be asking for some advice in a Facebook group or something but like that. But it it's quickly. A, it's quick, <laughs> Yeah. right? There's no shopping around here. Yeah, it's, yeah. I need this done today. Uh, in contrast, a design build contractor who does quarter million, half million dollar home rental projects, somebody might shop that project for a long time. Yeah. They're going to get an account on on the house. They're going to go through all the Pinterest boards to figure out what it is they want to That's do. That's a with courtship. The it's long. Yeah. yeah. It's a very different prospect journey, right? Very different. Yeah, exactly. So the, the dynamic is, is drastically different. The way you, you, you market and advertise to each of these is very, mm -hmm. very different. Mm -hmm. So if that's not well understood, again, you're going to fall short on but that takes time to develop. And what you're saying is sometimes a mar like a marketing agency will just, they want to bring in revenue. Benji, to your point, they're like any other business. And maybe if you don't even have that mapped out, they'll still want to dive in and start driving advertising dollars, even though these customer prospect journeys aren't mapped out and developed, right? Yeah. And, and unfortunately, I mean, I think we all fall victim from uh, time to time. We have shiny object syndrome. You know, something is well marketed. It's well positioned. It's exciting. People are throwing all kinds of terms now, you know, AI and, you know, <laughs> hey, you got to be doing this if you're not. So there's that fear, that fear of missing out that yeah. kind of kicks in and you're like, okay, I should be doing this, right? So you can kind of get caught up in that. Uh, so you have to be very careful. But uh, I guess the, the last point in all of that is just the fact that if you start putting dollars to drive momentum somewhere. If you don't have the back end to support that, mm -hmm. it's like trying to fill a bucket, you know, full of holes at the bottom. Totally. You're just wasting ad dollars. So unless you like, you know, lighting money on fire, you, these are the things you need to be careful of. Cool. Right. right. Um, one thing I've noticed on this subject as well um, across the board is that the average entrepreneur that I've seen in our industry, unfortunately, the entrepreneur, the leader, the business owner themselves is not nearly educated enough in marketing as well as they should be in order to A, have an intelligent conversation with professional marketers and marketing firms, and B, they don't have enough of this background themselves to even be able to judge who they're sitting in front of and whether they, this person actually knows what they're talking about or not, right? Benji, you and I have joked around marketers who are really good at selling themselves and they've got oh. the four-step process Dude. where we're going to understand your customer, right? And then we're yeah. going to develop kick-ass ads and then we're going to acquire traffic and, and then we've got the charts that are pointing up and right, we get, they show up, they've got the fancy, like those like very like marketer-esque glasses. Light blue tinge. Light blue usually. tinge and like maybe like the yellow lenses and they're wearing like a super flashy shirt and they're like, what you need like is our three step our three step process number one we're going to delegate number two we're going to automate and number three we're going <laughs> to dominate and here's the graph going in the direction you want to see and that will be five thousand dollars and like and like sadly i think i'm i'm joking around but i like i actually think the that fear of missing out thing kicks in and they go well i mean shit like i need to 
I need to advertise online. This I want to be really good I wanna, on TikTok. Yeah, like this guy, <laughs> this guy seems like a pro. And then like they end up, they end up in this situation I described totally. a minute ago, which is you're like, you're kicking yourself because you're 10 grand in the hole six months later. And like this whole, like while that graph was really great, uh, you know, marketer dude, I'm like screwed now. Totally. But in all seriousness, right, here's what I would say. You, if you want to be a real business owner for the rest of your career, you're a real entrepreneur, you have to have a bit of a skills tool belt that encompasses some real fundamentals, right? And we can think of a bunch of stuff to throw in there. You've got to have some fundamentals around accounting and tax. You have to understand some basics of legal and you need to understand fundamentals of marketing. So it's not to say that you need to be a professional marketer or a lawyer or mm-hmm. anything like that, but you have to be competent and read, literate, enough. literate enough to have an intelligent conversation with a marketer, with a lawyer, with a tax strategist. Um, I would say that that if you haven't developed that, it is a worthwhile thing to learn about, to read about. There's so many resources out there, but you need to be skilled enough mm-hmm. just to have these conversations. Before picking up the phone and Before calling picking, the, pick up the know, phone. Because if you don't, the marketing agency. not only can you not have an intelligent conversation, you can't actually judge and vet who's sitting in front of you and you're then at risk of getting taken away by those flashy <laughs> glasses and presentations. That, and that, that's a great point. Like, is there, is there stuff, are, are there um, obvious red flags? Are there simple questions to ask for our listeners who maybe like are wanting to move in this direction, but, but don't want to fall prey to the situation we just described? Are there certain things, um, how should their bullshit meter be tuned? Like what should they be looking for in a firm before giving it the green light? Mm-hmm. Well, first I got to say, I'm glad I didn't bring my glasses today. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, I mean, in all seriousness, uh, there's, it's kind of like, if you've ever seen that poster, you know, it says consultants. If you can't be part of the solution, there's a lot of money to be made in prolonging the problem. (laughs) Right. Right. (laughs) So it's kind of like that, that, that concept. Uh, Unfortunately, barriers to entry are extremely, extremely low in the marketing world. Right. And, And as you say, there's no order that kind of uh, regulates, the, you know, the industry. People go to school, you know, th- there's marketing courses and depending on what school they went to, maybe these are really dated. Totally, but uh, there's no like CPA, like, you know, an accountant, there's a CPA or there's a law degree, right? You become a prof- like a professional pass lawyer. The bar, yeah. yeah. In marketing, anyone can call themselves a professional. Not only that, but the rate at which that industry evolves, it, it's it's insane. It's so fast. You've, I mean, we're a full-time team and we're constantly investing in courses and resources and running tests and, and, you know, there's, there's economy that scales, uh, economies of scale that come with spending a lot of ad dollars that you, you get to figure things out relatively quickly. But yeah, anybody can call themselves a marketer today. You can take a course, you can go get a certification, you know, HubSpot certification, a Google certification, Bing, Facebook, and all of a sudden you've passed these exams and you can touch yourself as being a marketer, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and then there are courses out there which can teach you how to, hey, go acquire customers and, you know, focus on a niche and target this way and, but it's unless you have that track record, you've spent the dollars, you've made the mistakes. And unfortunately, that's what it is a lot of times. Have you been in the trenches long enough to, to really have figured it out? It is very difficult to see past the, the, the smoke and mirrors, as you say. Um, and, and fundamentally, marketing is not complex. It's not. So mm-hmm. to your point, Igor, you don't need to become a master at marketing, but you definitely need to be able to understand uh, some basic concepts, right? Uh you know, without it, you're, you're, you're crossing your fingers and yeah. that's the problem. You can't cross your fingers, give your money to somebody and say, well, I hope this one's going to hope this, hope uh, this is going to be the one, you know, it, it just doesn't work. What kind of things should a good marketing firm be able to demonstrate to their potential customer, i.e. the contractor in this conversation, what kind of things should they be able to show to give credibility, to let this customer know like, yeah, we're, we're not like that dude with the glasses that's just full of fluff. Like we, we have, you know, we've got testimonials, we've got certain ROI, we've got certain metrics. I, I actually don't know what that is. Like are there certain um, very clear tangibles that, that, you know, you guys or another really good marketing firm can say, hey, look, the, the proof is in the pudding. Here it is. Yeah. So there's, there's two types of conversations that you can have. And depending on your, your skill level, I mean, the, the conversation you want to have should be really all around business metrics and not so much marketing metrics. So there's a lot mm-hmm. of ambiguity in the world of, of marketing, and sometimes it's it's done on purpose. You'll get marketing companies who will well, we'll get you this impressions, to your point, Igor, impressions and clicks and clicks. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. who we'll cares? Create the persona and create the brand. And, okay, how, how's that going to help my top line? How yeah. Gonna, you know, what's my customer acquisition cost? But it's, it, 
ultimately is relatively simple. As a business owner, you want to grow your business, right? You're likely generating some revenue, but not enough. It's not where you want to be, right? So you've got a gap. You've got to identify what is that gap and how am I going to get there, right? Mm. So again, if you start looking at what it is that you do, you can probably, you probably got a good pulse on your average ticket price. And so therefore, you know, to get to the revenue you want, how many customers that's going to require. <laughs> and based on your ability to turn leads into sales, you've got a handle on what kind of lead volume you'll need. And so now, it, you know, you need to find a company that can help you generate that volume of leads. Totally. And you have to be able to do so profitably. Mm-hmm. So what businesses need is a, a degree of predictability because without predictability, you just don't know where your next lead's coming from or when it's coming. And that's the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, so, th- you know, those are the types of conversations you want to be having. What's it going to cost me to generate the lead? What's it going to cost me to, co- you know, to generate the customer based on the quality of the lead? And, you know, if, if that financial equation is sound, then now you have something that, that you can scale. Totally. Right? totally. Yeah. I want to just illustrate the simplicity of what we're talking about here, right? So what we're saying is like basic fundamentals. It's, it's, it's basic logic. So if you're doing $3 million a year in revenue right now, and you want to get to five a year, you need to go plus 2 million in production and sales. And yeah. what we're talking about is how do you drive those sales, right? So if we're going to go plus 2 million based on your average job size, how many more jobs is that than the previous year? If we're closing at 42%, to book that many jobs, how many estimates is that? And then how many leads are we slipping, like not estimating? So we factor that percentage in. So how many leads do we need? And then where are they going to come from? And a marketing firm needs to be able to demonstrate, here's how we're going to get those. And here's the cost at which we're going to do them. What's going to be the ROI? What's going to be the revenue growth based on these numbers? And what's going to be our customer acquisition cost? And here's the key. I think they need to be able to say, and here's where we've done that same thing. Many times. Many times in your industry. Yeah. And it's important to remember like every that you know that little flow through that you just went through that is literally grade seven math like it is this is not complex stuff so if you if you hear somebody kind of taking you off course and getting into like oh these are the impressions here's the brand look at this we're gonna apply ai yeah yeah yeah. yeah. it's like (laughs) that your bullshit meter should be going like ding 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 because like look this spreadsheet says that really all i need you to do is like deliver x many leads a month can you do that and if they it, it's, and show it's, me where you've done it's it before. black and white it's yeah. yeah they're like yeah we can because here are the other customers who've done that for and if totally. they're like well i'm not so sure about that but let me tell yeah. you about yeah. uh this other thing yeah so 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 that's a great point benji it literally is that simple and and so you know for your bullshit meter to 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 go off and to identify okay is this is this company worth worth its weight is is this true i would do you know do your own due diligence do your research vet vet the company read their reviews Talk to some of their customers. This happens time and time again. We'll have mm-hmm. people reach out and say, oh, we've spoken to some of your customers already. We know what you do. Yeah. Like, it's, it's good. Um, you know, those things are extremely important. Uh, hear it directly from, from the horse's mouth. And, and, and ultimately, show me a company that you've taken from three to five million or from 20 to 50 or what it, yeah. whatever it is. Show <laughs> me that you can do it. And then show me how that would apply to me. That yeah. said, um, make no mistake, no matter, you know, which market you're in or how long you've been in business, there are certain variables that will render, you know, your situation very, very different. doesn't mean that because this company in Denver, Colorado was able to go from this to this in this time frame, that those results, you can just Mm -hmm. carbon copy, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe they've got a stellar sales team. Maybe they've got appointment setters that are, you know, like no other, maybe operationally their, their, their margins. I mean, there's so many variables. And, And again, that's another huge mistake that people make it's they think that 90% of the, um, the, 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 the equation, right? What, what's going to allow them to be profitable is on the marketing side. Yeah. And it's not really the case. It's not like, hey, hire this particular marketing company and they're going to serve you sales on a silver platter. I mean, you're totally so heavily one small component. Yeah. It's a tiny, tiny component component in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. People get too lead thirsty and they think that like this, if you just deliver all this stuff on a plate, it'll solve all my business problems. But if you're, if your sales process sucks, if your follow-up sequence is garbage, if your offer isn't that good, if your gross margin is terrible, you could, you could literally have all the leads in the world. It solves absolutely nothing. It just makes you feel better for a couple of days. That's what we, stand for at breakthrough academy is you need to be an exceptional operator right totally. that that's yeah. that's rmo yeah, yeah. but is, and guys coming back to this marketing conversation i'll be the first to say i've fucked this up multiple times with different marketing agencies right um i've had number of situations the last one i'll tell you before we built 
and built out an in-house marketing firm, I made that mistake where, you know, nice boardroom, the guy in the light blue glasses comes in no. with many flowers on his no. treasure. <laughs> and Uh-oh. he's got the big graph. It's up on a huge an display. Apple watch. An Apple, 100% <laughs> an Apple watch with a gold little band. You right? sucker. <laughs> And he comes in and, and the presentations in different colors of the bar graphics going up to the right, right? And, uh, and, and in fairness, these guys have had some really good results and have a very large team. is like 90 people in the firm. And, and their track record sits in, um, it was in specifically in, in packaged food, right? Uh, that's their big background. And while they've had some success there, they've never worked in, in, in our industry, Right. And essentially what happened is, is we spent well into the multiple six figures over the course of about a year and a half with very, very poor results. And not where they not only were they poor results is they were learning our industry on our dollars. Yeah. And when I think back to it now with the robust marketing team that we've built out and what I know at this point, looking back at it, the people that I was was that were assigned to us and the marketing coordinators and account executives, yeah. whatever that means, that were working with us. Like I wouldn't hire these people for $40,000 a year right now in my company, looking back at it, right? We were teaching these guys and girls, very junior guys and girls in our dollar as this company was figuring it out, right? So overall, I think that fundamental concept of like, it's not that complex. The, the, if your bullshit meter is going off, you should probably listen to it. The key is they have to be able to demonstrate a track record of doing what you're trying to do in your industry in the contracting space. Very important. Yeah. So moving on, at what stage is a contractor like truly ready to dive into the world of digital marketing? Are there things that you like? So if somebody calls you guys, are there things that you look for where you say, hey, you know, we really need you to be at this stage and we need you to have, you know, these marketing materials or, th- you know, I, I don't know what it is, if it's if it's brand, if it's, if it's you know, visual assets, it could be a bunch of stuff. Are there things that you um, really make sure a business owner has before you take their money? And are there like red flags that would make you say, you know what, we'd love to work with you. I don't think you're quite there yet. Go do X, Y, Z. Yeah. I think there's uh, there's red flags on both sides. It should be, both sides should be trying to vet each other. So mm-hmm. as you said, Igor, you've got to be looking for a company that has the industry expertise, has proven results within the same industry, uh, maybe not just on one occasion, right? And uh, on the opposite end of the, of the spectrum, the company shouldn't be trying to wow you with fancy presentations. They should be trying to understand, you know, what, what you do, yeah. how you do it, where you're looking to get to. And so like in sales, right? Great salespeople, they're great listeners. Their ears are bigger than their mouths. Marketing is very much the same. If you get on a, a, a call and you have a conversation with a marketing company, it's like just a presentation, no care for you know, understanding what it is that you do or how you're potentially different. There's gonna be some you know, mm-hmm. clashing there. Uh, from my perspective, I can tell you what we look for yeah. when someone reaches out. We're looking for, you know, a company that is uh, already ha- has already invested in building their brand, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's important because if you have for the past few years focused exclusively on acquiring customers through uh, lead aggregators, right? Companies that will sell you leads. Very easy, very Houser, accessible. Um, home yeah, advisor, there's, there's, there's lots. There's a dozen of them, yeah. yeah. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with it. There's a time and place for it and you can be very successful with those type of platforms. I've seen tons of customers really scale with that. But uh, if that's exclusively what you're doing, Mm -hmm. not necessarily the best long-term solution is my point. And so you want a company that cares and is invested in building brand, right? Mm -hmm. Um, What what does that mean? Well, you know, you're, 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 aside from just the, the, the aesthetics, right? You hear brand, people think logo, design, that sort of thing. It's a lot more than that. It's, uh, you know, what do you do? How do you do it differently? You talked about offers before. What is it that you're offering? Um, the people that you hire, how do you train them? How do you retain them? How do you incentivize them? It's, it's what's your promise to the marketplace? Exactly. Yeah. Articulate it. Yeah. Exactly. And, and just some companies don't care about that. It's literally just a machine. They just want money in, money out. I don't care about a brand. I don't care if people actually take a liking to me. I'm in and I'm out, you know, but, the, the, the customer who is more likely to see success is truly invested in their business. Right. They care about what people think. They care about 
if you Google them, Benji, and you uncover dirt on them, that's going to affect them. They're yeah. going to want to go and clear that up. They're going yeah. to want to go and make it right with that customer. So we'll do that. We'll Google the company. We're looking for great reviews, be it on Google, on Facebook. We'll read comments to see what are people saying about the experience in working with this company. Um, you want to look for customers who are happy, who are pleased with the work. And you know, it doesn't mean that they're, that they're the lowest price. They could be charging top dollar. That's irrelevant. But, yeah. but are they truly committed to serving their market? Do they care? Are they, you know, there are some companies for them, it's, it's philanthropy. They're totally invested in the community and giving back and getting involved. And, you know, that, that, that helps. Yeah. Right? So if, if, if you're trying to market crap, your business is just getting reamed online because they're terrible. Yeah. And they're burning customers left, right, and center. I mean, the best marketing in the world is not going to work. You'll yep. get some leads, you'll get some sales, and it's done. But if you got the customer who's got everything dialed in, they got a nice brand it's it stands out that you know that the the way that they that they communicate their value proposition it's clear it's concise it's it's it just makes sense it's it's gonna it's gonna stick and that customer if they've got the systems the processes they've invested in culture they're way more likely to win long term mm. than with the company that's just churn and burn mm. you know and I think uh, when I think of a lot of our listeners here that uh, even though you might be running a great business, like your values are on point, you've, you've got good people in your team, you treat your customers well, you deliver on what you promise, mm-hmm. that, that doesn't mean that you've built a brand. Just because you're doing these things doesn't mean that you've actually taken the time and the energy to articulate that promise to the world that your brand stands for. So I think you're going in the right saying, direction though. You've, you've, got, right got, a, you've got a good nucleus, but you've you got a good ha- nucleus, you but haven't communicated it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what Mark is saying here is like, before you start driving traffic and you start spending dollars to get eyeballs on you, you have to have built out that brand, right? At some level. Yeah. And, 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 and to degree, Igor, what you're looking for is to hear from the customer's perspective that this is happening. Because yeah. a lot of companies are great at marketing. Yeah. Crazy branding. Yeah. It's in your face. It's loud. It, it resonates with you. <laughs> but they're the only ones screaming from the rooftops. Totally. Yeah. You're telling a story that's not real. That's right. Yeah. But when a brand has customers that are screaming from the rooftops about how amazing you are, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that speaks volumes. And it's yeah. much easier to go and acquire customers and get those customers to help you acquire more customers. And so your return on your marketing dollars are just just much, much, much higher if you're If you're doing that kind of stuff, how important is it that a company has really solid visual assets, either photography, graphic design, nice web pages? Like, is that is that a prerequisite for working with you guys? How important is it on a scale of one to ten? It's a twelve, right? (laughs) It's important. You know, if you're not willing to invest in good quality assets, good content, I mean, why why bother? Yeah, you know. Um, if you look the same as the 10 other companies in your market, what's your differentiator? Why right. would someone choose you over someone else? Like, like what's unique about you? And nowadays, it, you know, the, the, the barriers are also much lower. Uh, what does a phone cost? Everyone's got a phone. There's no excuse to, to get good quality content, even hiring contractors. I mean, there's a marketplaces where you can hire freelancers to come and help you out with the stuff that you maybe don't have resources for in house. Um, it is important and there's no reason not to, to show up. Cool. Totally. Yeah, no, th- this is really, really good points, guys. Um, the the analogy I would use, like if you don't have some of these things, it's like adding power to a really bad golf swing, right? Yeah. It's, it's you're throwing dollars, like you're hiring a marketing firm to amplify a message. That sucks. That's kind of shitty, yeah. right? <laughs> this is why I don't have a golf driver in my golf bag. <laughs> <laughs> right? So some of the things that, that really hit home for me from what Mark said, this isn't just random conversation we're having at this table. Like this stuff is real and we do this too, right, Benji? Like how much money and time have we invested into brand before we started amplifying it? well into the six figures in dollars spent plus a huge amount years. of time. We've been years. doing this for years. Yeah. Years, right? It, it is, guys, it is, if you're listening to this, if you're serious about business and you're seeing, and you're serious about being an entrepreneur, you have to invest in brand. It's probably going to be one of the most valuable assets that you're going to have at the end of the day. It's more valuable than your nice F-350 King Ranch. It's more valuable than, than, than your ladders and your equipment. It's, yeah. it's more valuable than any of that stuff. It's, um, it, it's the most valuable asset you have. So you've got to invest in it before you start driving the eyeballs to it. Another one, we talked about like visuals and assets, man, a photographer, a real pro photographer for a day is like seven, 800 bucks. Yeah. Peanuts to get really good visual assets that you're going to drive 
eyeballs to. Totally. Right. It absolutely makes sense. Um, and then I want to add one point that we didn't mention that I think is so important before you get going with a good marketing firm, which is understanding your target market and understanding your market positioning. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I really enjoyed that we did in the last year is we actually, I mean, this is a little over the top, but we actually commissioned like a market research company. I think it was in Oregon that did a pretty deep dive into our prospect audience because we really wanted to understand who they are, what, who they what are, they need, what they are they talk. thinking, how they talk. Totally. And these are people that have no idea who we are, but they're, they are our model, right? So we're, they're not tainted that they like us, mm -hmm. but we're kind of trying to understand who they are because if you don't know who your target market is and you don't understand your market positioning, it's going to be way more difficult for someone like Mark's company to really light it up for you if the, they don't know where to go target, right? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're an amplifier. Our company specifically, we're on the paid media side of things. So what we do is we, we take advertising dollars and we amplify messages. That's, totally. what, that's yeah. what we do, right? So if you don't know what that message is, you're not able to clearly communicate it. It's very you're amplifying difficult. noise. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You're amplifying noise. Uh, okay. That was a really, those are some really, really good points on investing in brand first. Visual assets are pretty inexpensive and easy to get. Understand your target market and your position. Um, <clears throat> I would really, you just um, made, made that statement, like we are an amplifier. So so maybe take us through the nuts and bolts of what you guys do, what works, what kind, uh, what kinds of ROI generating, generating strategies are you deploying uh, for your customers? Years ago, we used to be a full service firm. Mm. Right? So we have experience with building websites, creating content, blogging, social media, the works. But what we realized early on is that the quickest way to affect change is with advertising dollars, right? You can literally, and, and the platforms favor this today, right? Um, you can blog till the sun goes down. You can create organic content. You can have a local SEO strategy. And I'm not knocking them because they're great. Long-term, you need, I mean, you need to be doing this. And unfortunately, if you don't start today, well, you'll never get the results. Yeah. But we are on the paid media side, which is simply, which, which simply means that we spend money to get eyeballs, to get in front of people, right? So that's what we do. And it's, it's very scientific. It is very, uh, to, uh, as as you said, Benji, black and white, yeah. very very binary. So we're spending dollars and we're expecting that after a certain number of eyeballs to a particular page, we're able to generate somebody with an interest, right? A, a, a prospect, a potential uh, customer. And we're hoping that we can drive that that lead, that prospect for less than what it's going to take that contractor to, to basically turn them into a sale. So naturally, they'll you'll need a couple of leads. You got to get a couple of people to the page. After a couple of people reach out, great. You have a few leads. Right. After a few leads, you got a sale. Does that make financial sense yep. or not? And so what we do is we pin up all the networks against each other. So you've got search. So if you talk about search engines, Google and Bing, you run ads and you aim to get in front of people who have an intent. They have a need. They're looking for your services. That is the 3% of the market who are ready to buy. Yep. And unfortunately, that's where a lot of people stop. They run search campaigns and they, and they think that, oh, that's the holy grail. I'm going to run search campaigns. And if, if these people don't, you know, buy great. And if they don't, well, you know, that's all there is to it. Yeah. There's so much more to it. So you've got search and then you've also got the social side of things. So the notion of putting ads, like I just landed here in Vancouver. My phone is littered with ads about the home improvement space just because they know where I am and they know what I'm interested in. Right. Oh. <laughs> so if I was buying real estate here or renovating, or remodeling or whatever, there's people putting dollars into ads to get in front of me. So from a, from a paid media standpoint, the companies who are getting in front of me are the ones who are putting dollars into ads. The mm -hmm. people who are relying solely on me searching, I'm, they're not getting in front of me because mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not actively seeking out these services, right? So right. you've got to understand intent. Yeah. So that's what we do. We help people get in front of people with an intent, which is more the direct response stuff. And we also help people get in front of people who don't necessarily have an intent today, but are in market and are potential customers at some point down the road. Right. So we're buying traffic, we're buying eyeballs, we're getting in front of people. Another component to what we do is what we put in front of them. So when they get to a website, it's very important what's there. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of people will send visitors that they've just paid hard money to acquire to get in front of, they'll send them to a page which just doesn't do them justice yeah, right. on the website, either because the website's archaic, 
Mm -hmm. or uh, just hasn't been properly mapped out, hasn't been well designed, and it's not hitting the mark. And so their ability to turn that visitor who had an interest into a lead is very, very low. Right. So that's an area where They're we can slipping. kind of come in and help. They're they slipping. bounce. They say, okay, this, this page sucks. It's really ugly. This isn't speaking to my needs. Uh, I'm out of here. I'm going to go retype exactly. into Google or check something else out. That's right. Exactly. So what, what, do, like wh when you, um, I'm assuming a lot of this is, is, is pay-per-click. Like this is somebody's type something into Google. I, um, somebody in Denver, uh, look roofing contractors in Denver. They type that in the ad comes up. What does it, what does it push them to? Yeah. So, I mean, someone does a search, there's all sorts of things that are going to show up on that search engine results page. You can have the Google guaranteed ads, you can have the paid ads, the map pack, the local, the, the, the organic stuff. If they click on the ads up at the top, that's the area that we play in. Yeah. Uh, when they click there, the idea is to bring them to a page that's specific to what they were looking for and not the home page, right? So if you are a general contractor, which happens to offer a variety of different services, you've just made a grave mistake. If you're sending somebody who did a search for best roofing contractor near me, to a homepage that talks about siding and windows and doors, right? Right. So you're bringing them to that roofing page. If uh, they had hail damage and they're looking for uh, a company to help them with an inspection, then bring them to a page that talks specifically about that. So the idea is just to match the message, right? Match their intent with what it is that, that, that you offer. So the page should speak to that and only that, nothing else. It's what we right? call a landing page. Yeah. Yeah. Landing page. And, and ultimately, I mean, it's, it's simple. There are no distractions on the page. So the concept very simply is to eliminate anything that would deter them from reaching out to you. So first thing, if I'm in market looking for this service and I'm looking for, for, for a company to help me out, I want to make sure as soon as I get that page, I'm at the right place. So how do you do that? Well, if I'm, if it's a roofing service, guess what? Guess what I want to see as an image when I get there? Somebody on a roof Someone with a hammer a doing something. Something, yeah. right? The message is important. I want to know that they're in my location. I want to know how to reach them. These are all things that should hit you front and center as soon as you get onto that page, mm -hmm. right? And then after that, what's important is you want to try to create an emotional connection. So how do you do that? Well, great visuals. You want to show that you're human beings, that, that you exist, that you're not some fly-by-night company. Hey, we're established. We've been in the Denver market for 30 plus years. We've got a team of 60 people who will stop at nothing to make sure that you're happy and that your family's safe and whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things that you want. And um, there's yeah. a whole bunch of technical things that can be done on these pages to increase the likelihood of it turning a visitor into a lead. But ultimately, that's the goal. It's make sure that everything that a homeowner would want to see to feel confident and to have enough trust and yeah. that you're the right person. It's, it's like, yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm reflecting on when I do Google searches for certain things. One thing that will make me spend more time on a page or or con or continue engaging with something is if I immediately know I'm in the right spot, right? Like that's what a good landing page should do. It's yeah. like it addresses the need. I'm looking for roof repairs in this specific city. The landing page communicates that very, very, very clearly. I know that, and I say, okay, maybe I'll. You know, and it give speaks this, to my needs. It's I'll, I'll give this page my information, yeah. and hopefully this this contractor will call me. What's not good is what you're saying is like a bunch of noise, a bunch of extra, a bunch of storytelling that this searcher doesn't need to hear. It's 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 addressing a super super specific need and nothing else. And you can't navigate off of it too, ideally, I think, right? That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a ratio. You want a one to one ratio. You don't want a navigation. You don't want a footer. You don't want anything. And, and people will bounce. They'll hit back because they're, you know, especially the millennial generation. We're more tech savvy. We're used to doing our research. So mm -hmm. we may leave. We want to click the logo to get to the website and do, do more research. And that's okay. But the fact that they've hit that landing page, one, as marketers, we've captured their intent. They've mm -hmm. clicked a cert. They, they, they've clicked an ad, come to our landing page. Now we know this is somebody we'd want to continue marketing to. Right. Right. So you have re retargeting that kind of kicks in there. I like your analogy from before. The beautiful thing, beautiful thing about digital is that you can know what's going on, right? The, the offline analogy would be like you've sent a flyer and, and now you know who's grabbed that flyer and put it on their fridge and stuck a magnet on it. Yeah. It's... Uh, yeah. I mean, imagine having to pay the same amount of money every time you wanted to reach the same homeowner. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be the case with digital, right? You can, you can retarget for cheaper. You can retarget people for, for less money and, and, and only the people who are interested in what you have to do. So you can blanket, you know, you target based on geography because that's the market you serve. You put your message out there. Uh, prior to this, Benji and I are having a conversation about, you know, does it work when somebody flips open the phone and does a live and say, hey, we're out here and X, Y, Z, we've just been affected by hail. I'm up on the roof doing an inspection. It helps because one, you're, you're, you're showing that you're a subject matter expert. You're out in the field. You're educating people. And the people that are consuming with that content, well, one, the platforms like it. They reward you. 
uh, in the form of, of cheaper clicks if you are running ads to these audiences. But two, you have intelligence in terms of who is interested in this type of content. Mm-hmm. And then you want to continue serving ads, mm-hmm. right? So, so that's really what it is. It's stop having conversations with everybody and have conversations, meaning, meaningful conversations with people that are genuinely interested in what it is that you do. Yep. That's the objective of every marketer, right? What it, um, just really quickly before we, we, we move off from this strategy, I've got, I've got more questions to follow, but, but um, what is it that the homeowner or potential customer sees? Is, is, it, a, is it a field where they enter in inf- information and hit submit? Is it a find out more button? Like what are the, what's the formula? What are the fundamentals of a really good landing page? What's there? Yeah. So, so as we said, you know, yeah, going down from, from top to bottom, these are things that we test. This is where you can really geek out, right? It's with, super scientific. With the glasses yeah, yeah. and that. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, obviously location, you want to call out, call out the location, show that you're there, you're, you're, you're in the market, right? Yeah. That's number one. You have the expertise. Any visuals should aim to support your claims. So if you're going to show homes, don't show homes in Florida. If you're out in Denver, right? The clay tiles, maybe not the best right. thing to be showing in terms of imagery, palm trees and stuff like that, right? Yet you see so many of these mistakes. Yeah. Right? Cause, cause Which is why it's so important to have images it's, online. It has got to be yeah. your stuff. It's got to be your yeah. content, your story. Don't home. like Google, like dude fixing house and then use that image from Google as your ad. Well, and that's what it is, right? These marketing companies, we have accounts with like iStock and Getty Image right. or whatever and we pay money monthly subscriptions to have all these images. But the best is when your customer can send you all the imagery yeah. imagery and videos and you can really make something unique. Cool. You can give it its own kind of personality. So aside from that, the most important thing is to make these pages skimmable. We're all busy, right? Uh, half of us are looking at these pages on a mobile phone. Phones, yeah. We're, we're scrolling with our thumbs, right? And uh, so these pages, if you litter them with content, again, the purpose is not to, sh- to show up organically here. So we're not trying to get indexed from an SEO standpoint. Yeah. So what are the important points that you want to say? Oh, well, we're a platinum preferred contractor. We've been in business for this many years. We employ this many people within the local community. We manufacture our own product. We're, we, we back our product by the, our, our product and installs by this warranty. Uh, we have, uh, I mean, it just goes on and on and on, right? We can help you with financing. Can't afford to install this type of roof? Good, no problem. We've got options for you. We've got financing. It just make it easy. Eliminate friction. That's the goal. That's the purpose of that page. And if the, the homeowner really likes what they see, they would then put in, hey, here's my name, here's my email, phone number, give me a call, or what's the actual yeah. capture? So f- f- phone call is always one, right? Yeah. A phone call is always great because you get somebody on the phone. You know, the, the objective to remind people here isn't for this page to make the sale. There's nobody who's going to no. make the sale, you know, better than you, your your, 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 your team. So the, ex- the objective is to get that touch point, to get that contact. So phone is one, you've got a form. Now you can choose to have a visible form on the page. You can choose to have a button uh, where some someone has to take an action for the form to show up, mm-hmm. right? Again, these are things that are worth testing. So you can test one page where the form is visible. You can test another page where you've got a button. Now, if somebody has to click a button in order to get the form to show up, they have already made a commitment, a micro commitment. They're interested. They're more likely to fill out the form. Now, if you show a form with 15 fields, I'm less likely to want to fill that out than if all I have to give you is my name and email. Right. You know what I mean? These are things where that's our job as marketers is to try to figure that out. Because the perfect mix. The, the perfect, perfect mix. Rate, yeah. A conversion rate of 7.2% on one landing page versus 64 on another when a customer is spending $50,000 a month, that can mean you know, Huge. 25 more leads at a whatever, 20, 20% conversion rates, five more leads, so one more sale, Hey, we've just paid for ourselves. Yeah. You know? So those are the kind of things that you want a marketing company to be doing. Yeah. Yep. Now I, I I don't need to go too far down the technical rabbit hole, but I, it it is an interesting point. Like once somebody fills out that form, let's say somebody does really need a, a roof repair. We've been using that example. They they do genuinely need that. They say, you know, my name's Benji. Here's my phone number. Here's my email. Submit. Does that thing get pushed like directly to the contractor? Does it go straight to their CRM? Did they, did they get a notification? Like I've been doing sales for 10 years. Like the, the speed that you can get to that lead is unbelievably important. How do you guys account for that? Great question. And this is where I think games are won and lost. <laughs> totally. <laughs> right? Um, I mean, we use, you know, my company, we use probably about 35 different applications to run our business and we're constantly vetting new ones and talking to a bunch of software companies. And uh, 
it's it's crazy to me that some companies in this day and age will still take two three days to get back to you to book a demo right like that shouldn't be the case no. like technology is there automation's there i think this whole pandemic thing has has done nothing but accelerate their wit the rate at which people have adopted technology yeah and gotten used to that immediate response yeah you know um i want to talk to somebody i can get somebody on zoom within 30 minutes and have them walk through a project or, or whatever, right? So it's, businesses need to be looking at that. I think when that lead is triggered, you need to, you speak to lead is is everything. It's not important, it's, it's everything, Yeah. <laughs> right? If you're spending dollars to, to, to generate leads, make sure your team understands the value that's on that lead. Mm -hmm. um, because otherwise you're just you're, you're you're just missing out you know you have to get to that homeowner within minutes to either set the appointment like you said Benji technology is there so you can have your sales force automatically get pinged hey we just got a new lead get on it you can have a message sent out to the customer automatically be it via email be it via text you know throughout the process let's say you give them the opportunity to book their their appointment on a on a on one of these online calendar online scheduling apps yeah. great in the meantime Use that window of opportunity to educate them about your business, why you're different. Okay. When the salesperson so shows up to the home, they know everything about the company. Yeah. They're it's already nur emotionally nurture connected. Sequence, yeah. Nur nurture, yeah. yeah. Yeah, guys, what I want to really highlight here, what I love is we're talking about a very, very simple concept, right? If we distill this conversation in the last 10 minutes, we're driving ads to a landing page that has some sort of call to action. And if they bounce off that landing page, we're retargeting. That's the summary of what we talked about, right? So coming back to the guy in the light blue glasses, if someone's trying to overcomplicate this whole thing, um, you should take notice of that. The That is conceptually a very, very simple yeah, process that I think is. anyone can understand. Now, the value of working with a real professional is that there's a huge amount of testing and optimization that I'm sure Mark can speak a lot to that can be done there, right? You, when you look at the ads, we're testing all sorts of creatives, the visual, the copywriting, like the actual wording in there. We're testing the targeting where, who we're targeting those ads. There's so much what we call split testing, A versus B, B wins. Okay, B versus C, B wins again, B versus D, right? There's so much split testing that can be done. Uh, on the landing pages, it's what's the structure of the landing page? What are the creatives, the images, the videos, the copywriting? What's the call to action? Where does it sit? What's the retargeting like? There's a million things to split test and, and, and to optimize. And that's why you need to work with real professionals. In your industry. In your industry. Because they've learned these lessons you, already and these they're not doing it on the back your of your business. Yeah. So but, that's that's the value. And that's why that's why a, a mark is so much more valuable than dude with glasses we were making fun of a while ago. Exactly, right? So, so technically, there's a lot of complexities and a lot of optimization. You have lots of experience. But conceptually, it's a very simple framework. We're driving eyeballs to where they need to go. So that's why I think you need to have enough knowledge to be able to just have that speak, to have an intelligent conversation with the marketer. They can do all the complex technical stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we... If you look at the marketing umbrella, I mean, we play in one very small area, yeah. but it's yeah. it's acquisition, it's paid media, it's money in, money out, it's black and white, it's easy to measure. That said, there are so many things outside of that that are very important. You know, we talked about building a brand, the fundamentals, the notion of having the right systems and the processes being super important. I mean, these are all things that you just can't neglect. The organic side of things. Uh, businesses that invest in brand long term, they just see lower lead costs because yeah. people are looking for them, right? They're they're coming in through Google searches because they're looking for the name. And we see that. We have companies that approach us and they get on board. They've been in business 30 years. They've invested in, you know, TV, radio and print. And it's easier to generate a lead through digital for those companies than a company who's never invested in any type of branding. I love it. Um, that was all extremely valuable stuff. Uh, I wonder because you're such a pro if you can Tell us, like, what sorts of things uh, do you see out there? Are there are there tactics that people are trying, um, or are there strategies that people are wasting their time on? What kind of crap do you see where you just like shake your head and you're like, "Oh my god, that's not going to work." Yeah, I mean, I I think you brought it up earlier, Benji. The notion of speed to lead, right? If you're putting money into something and you're generating leads and you're not getting to them in time. That's right. That's just a waste of, of hard everyone's time and money. Dollars. Yeah. Um, other than that, I, I think if you don't have, if, if you're just, if you're coming from a place where you're used to just you know, acquiring leads yeah, and you haven't made any type of investment into building a brand, it's going to be a lot harder for you. 
So those are the things that, that just don't work. So mm -hmm. we were talking about how an agency should be vetting a customer and all the things that they kind of look for. Yeah. Unless those things are there, uh, going to put dollars into marketing, that that's what doesn't work. You're amplifying a bad message. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and it, an interesting way to look at it is like there are different disciplines within within marketing, right? Just like there would be within within med within medicine, right? A cardiologist is not an orthopedic surgeon. They're they're, they're different things, right? And and there are different specialties within marketing and different professionals and different things, right? We just talked about like Mark's firm Webrunner. They're really good at driving paid ads, but there are other things that involve that are involved in having a great brand, right? Like you need to have really solid content and there's SEO is, is a play, right? Video is an element. So there, there's all these things you got to be, you need to be investing in and you want to balance that line of what we can call direct response marketing, which is like I pay for a lead and I get a lead versus I'm building a brand for the long term, right? And, and both I think are important to do. Yeah. The idea is to do both in tandem. The unfortunate yeah. thing is that one can happen a lot faster than the other, mm -hmm. right? So you want to be in a position just acknowledge that what you're doing is going to take some time and you're going to be making an investment where you won't necessarily see an immediate return. Right. So far too often we have conversations where people come and they're like, yeah, I've been buying leads for so long and it's not working. It's not predictable. Quality is not there. I'm competing against so many other contractors. It's a race to the bottom. I'm, I'm getting chopped down on price. I mean, I want more predictability, more control. I want to build a brand. Okay. You got to be willing to put the effort, yeah. the time, the resources and resources into doing this kind of stuff. Right. And it's, it's, uh, it, it's something that's difficult to just completely outsource. Yeah. Right? Awesome. Guys, before we wrap up, I've got one kind of quick final question for you, Mark, is uh, you mentioned earlier this industry and this profession is evolving so quickly. Uh, what kind of trends and focuses, is there anything else that you're just seeing in the long term, mm -hmm. or is it, or is it just this, this real kind of content focus? Like what's important for a smart evolved contractor? to have front of mind when it comes to marketing over the next couple of years? I, yeah, gr great question, Igor. I, I think anybody who is genuinely interested in scaling a business to something substantial, they need to have some marketing function in-house. You need mm -hmm. to think of building a marketing team. And I'm mm -hmm. saying this and, you know, I'm, I'm not worried that it's going to put us out of business because right. we're specialists in one little thing. And that's great. But there's so many things that we lean on the customer for to help us with. And so you do need those resources. Having you brought up photography, that's important. You need to develop that network, those contacts, the photographer, the videographer, people who can write good content that can help educate customers, mm -hmm. right? The sales teams are having conversations over and over and over with homeowners about all sorts of things. And they're addressing, uh, you know, misconceptions, questions that come up over and over and over. The, interview your team. Put that content together. Totally. Publish it to your blog. Publish it to, to YouTube. Uh, you know, create content around that. We're seeing some customers creating podcasts, mm -hmm. you know, the stuff that you guys are doing, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's how you get in front of people and how you generate leads. And it doesn't necessarily always generate results immediately. Yeah. So you got to be cognizant of that and expect that, hey, this is a long-term play here. So you got to play the short and the long game. Play the short and the long game. I love it. One one really good example, and I love this example because of how beautifully simple it is. Uh, Joe Paluzzi in his book, Epic Content Marketing, which is a really good one. There's a couple pages on a contracting company. What was it called? The Pool Installation River. Company? River Pool and River Spa. River Pools and Spas, yep. right? And I love the Marcus, story of Marcus this. Marcus Sheridan, that's it. Yes, yeah, exactly. I love the story from an effectiveness of like content marketing, SEO, bringing real value to your prospect base. Yeah. He simply, the, the owner of this company, look, uh, spoke to his sales team and his office team, the one who takes the incoming phone calls, and they just went through this beautifully simple exercise where they just took a whiteboard and they put together a list, a huge list of what are the questions that, that, that a prospect has coming in. What type of pool is cheaper, A or B, right? What kind of pool is easier to maintain? A, like, it's, it's just very simple questions. Just like, what is the sales team hearing? What is the office hearing when they get mm -hmm. just phone calls to the 1-800 to the number or whatever it is? And then they said, okay, well, let's bring in a content team and let's write exceptional content and produce video content for each of these questions, right? And what do you know? All of a sudden, they're ranking top, not only in their city, but in the state and the country, because that's literally what people are writing into yeah. Google. It's such a simple concept. It, it is simple. And, and, you know, I think sometimes people look at this and they're like, okay, it's great, but you know, we're going to have to write this stuff. We don't have any writers. And I mean, there's tons of excuses that we can come up with, but there's, there's, there's a little hack that you can use whereby you can interview people and just have 
that transcription service. I think most Apple devices will do it. You just turn the thing on and it's listening and it's turning it into text. Now you can take that, send it over to an editor who can polish it, put it into a blog post. But the idea is to create that content and not just have it sit out there in the ether where no one can see it. How do you leverage it? Where could you put that? Well, you could put it up on a website. You can put it into sales collateral. You can pop it into your, your proposals, right? To make, to, you know, make your proposals stand out relative to somebody mm -hmm. else's. Yep. Someone else is coming in with these carbon copy, uh, old school handwritten proposals. You're coming in with something nice, polished, where you're educating the customer and leading from a place of value. It's uh, there's an unfair advantage with the company that understands the content game. Totally. So I this is it. this is where it's going. You need to be a content publisher five or ten years from now. If you're not doing that, I think it's probably safe to say you're going to have a very hard time. Yeah. So balance. Deals. Yeah. Balance. I love it. the way that Mark was is like balance the long game. The, the brand building game. game with the short game, which is pay to get leads. That's the mm -hmm. golfer in me. I love it. <laughs> Very good. Um, Mark, it's been such a great conversation, man. It's, it's so awesome that, uh, that you flew out here to have this with us. Really insightful. Um, if people want to find out more about you and more about what you guys do at Web Runner, where how can they get in touch with you guys and find out uh, more about you? Absolutely. Thank you, Igor. I'd be pleased. Head over to webrunnermedia.com. That's our website. We've got a blog there. I urge people to check that out. There's tons of great content. But if they want to speak with us directly, there's a yellow book a demo button on the website. Nice Can't call miss to action. It. Top right corner. <laughs> book that. You'll get on the phone with someone and we'll listen to you. Talk to us about where you're at, where you want to be, what you've done in the past, what worked, what didn't, and try to figure out if there's a good fit. And if there is, great. If not, no worries. You'll leave the call having hopefully learned something. Absolutely. And, and just so we understand like the kinds of people that you have in your team, we talked a bit about marketing. You've got specialists and what kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, right now we're a 25 person staff. Uh, we have search marketers, we have uh, paid social marketers, we have landing page, what we call conversion designers. Uh, we have a CSM team, which liaises between our, our back end production team and our customers. We're heavily entrenched in contracting. So we know the industry, we've spent a ton of dollars in the industry, driven tons of leads. Yeah, that's the only thing we do. So awesome. paid acquisition for, for contractors. It's very cool. Yeah. And no one wears the light blue glasses other than you. Nobody. No, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's a prereq when we when we screen for interviews. Awesome. <laughs> it's so what we look for. If you want to chat with with Marker's team, head over to WebRunner and uh, and and check it out. And like I said, I think if, if you're in the business game for the long haul, it is worth you having dollars well spent. Dollars well spent and some fundamental mm -hmm. education in the marketing world so that you can have intelligent conversations with guys like Mark. Mark, thanks for doing this. Awesome, guys. Good to be here. This was fun. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, if you enjoyed this show, hit that subscribe button. It's what allows us to produce more awesome content for you totally for free.